for a second. Don't drop it home with both hands. We'd like to say good evening to everyone, and God bless you to those of you that's joining via the web. God bless you, and we thank you for everything that God is doing and how he is blessing. Tell somebody he's blessing me. Come on, tell somebody he's blessing me. And it's just a privilege to be in the land of the living because God is worthy of all the praise. If you don't realize it, that you are blessed to be alive. There are a lot of people that are experiencing storms as we speak, or not only natural storms, but they are facing spiritual storms. People are going through things in their lives, and they are finding it hard to cope with. But if you know Jesus, tell somebody, I know Jesus. He's able to do anything but fail. And so we're just elated. I'm just making sure I'm logged in on here because if those of you that may have questions tonight, I'm able to see your questions and I'm able to answer your questions. That's what inter interactive is. Interactive means that you are able to engage. I'm not only able to engage you, but you also in a, are able to engage me back. So we want to utilize every tool God has given us. And by knowing that God is blessed, I want you to really get your Bibles and turn to Acts the 17th chapter. Our main scripture would be the 23rd verse of the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. And I want you to get that. And I want you to look at it while I get all my twos up. And I pray that you have had a blessed day in whatever country you're in. I pray that you have been blessed. And I pray that... Um, God is certainly keeping you as he said that he would. And I ask that you turn on your cell phones on silent. Thank you so much. Um, so we can further do that which God needs us to do. Look at somebody say, I'm happy. Come on, look at somebody say, I'm happy. Happy knowing that God is in charge of my life. Um, I'm excited about all of you that have tuned in and have taken this time to be with us. And I'm just simply getting everything is why you turn into your scriptures tonight. We all often talk about discipleship. Say with me, discipleship. We I want all of you all to press close to the first two rows, if you don't mind. I need all of y'all to press close to the first two rows. We always talk about discipleship. And we talk about um, discipling others, but you can't be disciple others uh, until you first become a disciple. Amen? Amen? And what is a disciple? It's a follower of Christ, right? Amen. How many of you truly follow Christ? And how many of you truly know what it is to follow Christ? First of all, we must learn to be obedient. Say, I must learn to be obedient. Everybody wants to say they're following Christ and following God, but nobody wants to be obedient. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament that our obedience is better than our sacrifice. And so many of us say, I'm doing this and I'm doing this for the kingdom. I, I spent all day up there. That's fine. That's fine. But out of your sacrificing, are you truly being obedient? And, and so if, when we are obedient, we'll find that we have more of a victorious life. We'll find out that we're not living in defeat and, and in fear any longer because we're keeping God's word forefront in our life. God is going to be a reward of them that diligently seek him. So we must know that. We must realize that. And I'm almost to everywhere I need to be. So if anybody have questions that, that's watching all over the world, I got all these different Facebook and our website pulled up so I can um, be a blessing to you. Good. Tell, come on, y'all tell Reggie hello. I think Reggie may be at work, but God bless you, Reggie. I got you locked in here, and um, I see you. I can see everybody everywhere. So that's a good thing. Tell somebody that's a good thing. So let's look at the book of Acts. And our main, really, verse we're going to look at is the 23rd verse. It says, 
For as I passed by, and behold your devotions, I found an altar with the, this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. Paul, after he was converted, did a lot of teaching to a lot of people. Paul is what we call the apostle for the Gentiles. If you don't know it, you are a Gentile. If you wasn't born a Jew or you didn't fall in that Jewish land, you are a Gentile. And you have to understand about biblical history is Jesus came to his own. His own was the Jewish people, but the Bible declares that his own received him not. And oftentimes in our lives as men and women of God, when you try to declare the gospel to your own, they will reject you. When you make up in your mind to declare to the people that grew up with you, before I hear them say, is not this the carpenter Joseph's son? And how should we hear him? That's why he said, I wasn't able to work miracles because they were so familiar with knowing him, they really didn't believe that he was able, who he was. And people oftentimes in your disciple, uh, as you follow Christ, doing discipleship, and as you begin to disciple others, people that you know often won't take you serious enough. So what do you do? Ask somebody, what do you know? Good evening, Nicole. Greetings to you, too. What do you do? You keep pressing forward. Know your purpose. Each one of us, each one of you that is viewing has a purpose. Say with me, I have a purpose. Come on, say it with conviction. Say, I have a purpose. Come on, you're not loud enough. Say, I have a purpose. Now, Sunday we discovered that Paul and Silas was in a jail, and they sang and they prayed that everybody heard them. Why don't we allow everybody in the nation to hear our praise to God? If we want miracles, if we want things to happen like never before, we have to begin to send up a praise. Does not the Bible declare when my praises go up? Blessings come down, but we're in a society where we are so convinced that if people feel like we're serving God, they won't like us. I come to tell you, they won't like you anyway, whether you do or whether you don't. So take it upon yourself and know that God is my everything. Now, Paul begins in the 17th chapter. He begins as he makes his journey. And, and, and he goes and he's at Thessalonica and he's at all these places. And he, he, he went to the synagogue of the Jews. And it was customary that when Paul went to a city, he always went to the synagogue. You got to understand that in his earlier training, he was a Pharisee. And he was trained, said with me, by the best. It's amazing that when God has a call in your life, he will allow you initially in your early part of your life to go through some training. You might not really understand why you're going through. Even on your earthly jobs, you need to take everything serious enough because it just may be that God is going to utilize what I learned for the kingdom. And I want to tell you today that everything that God has allowed me to do is because of my initial training. So we have to learn to take everything serious, but he, he, he went to the synagogue, and Paul, as his manner was, went into them, and three Sabbath days he reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. So Paul, being a follower now of Christ, being converted on the Damascus Road, he began to take what he learned and begin to really apply to how he got delivered. He began to, to let people know that Jesus is real, and he died, and he rose again. And he begins to, even with, with King Agrippa, he so much had his testimony together that King Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to be, said me, to be a Christian. As believers, we should have everything about our walk together. The world is looking to poke and to make fun. And the Bible also tells us we shouldn't start anything and don't finish because the world is ready to mock us. But things like this in the Bible, we don't read. We love to say, I want to start this ministry, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. But three weeks later, you stop. And people are waiting 
to make fun at you. But Paul was reasoning, he was teaching them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Verse 4 says, and some of them, say with me, believe. Now, let's look at the first part of it. Some will believe. When you make up in your mind to really follow Christ, when you make up in your mind to really live out your purpose, some people will believe. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. They're going to look at your life. They're going to look at your call. They're going to look at your walk. They're going to look at what you say. But not only what you say, but they're going to look at what you do. And they're going to believe. But there are going to be some that's going to conspire and consort. Look what he says. And he says in the next verse of 4, he says, And some consorted with Paul and Silas. And, but look in verse, And of them devout Greeks and great multitudes. And of the chief women, not a few. Now, it's amazing. In this, this chapter, he talks about women. Now, depending on where you grew up in church and what background, your denomination of background, they made it seem like women were second-class citizens. But I see Paul on occasion after occasion mention, come on, somebody, women. And it's amazing. Even in the church, it seemed like the women outnumber the men. Somebody said, where are the men? Here I am. See, be thankful. Tell somebody to be thankful. Because God does have men. Verse 5 says, but the Jews which believe not. Now, here go to 5. They, there were some that did not believe. Now, Paul come with this, some would say a new thing. Does not the Bible declare there's nothing new under the sun? What may be new to you maybe has been around since the existence of time. You just, it just caught up with you. Or maybe you just got in tune with what God was doing. And so, so it doesn't mean that it's new. It is new to you. Say it may be new to me. But all God needs you to do is believe. But there were some that did believe, and there were some that didn't believe the Bible declares. And they were moved with envy. I wonder why they was moved with envy. Maybe because Paul came to town with something they never heard, and people started believing in Jesus, and people got upset. Let me show you something. When you begin to declare the good news to men and women all over the place, and people start saying, I want this thing that the good news had to say, I want this Jesus, folks would get upset. I mean, people, you have been in the church with all of your life. Now, he was in the temple. Tell somebody he was in the temple. This wasn't just no anybody getting upset. This was not just no anybody getting mad. And see, it, 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 it amazes me why there's so much envy in the church. Why? We don't have no business being jealous of one another when God has given all of us a place. God has given all of us a call, and we have no reason to be envious or jealous of no one. But if you would get up off your rusty, dusty, and did what God told you to do, maybe people would believe in what you're doing. Don't try to block the progress of the kingdom simply because you took your eyes off the pride and started looking upon somebody else's. Doesn't the Bible say, cover not thy neighbors? Come on, somebody. So it's been a good week. It's been a good week, and, and good to see you, all of y'all, Reggie. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, listen, listen. God is showing us something even then. He's showing us now that as you begin to disciple and lead other people to Christ, no one thing, some going to believe and some not going to believe, and some just going to hate on you. But I want to tell you, thank God for my haters. If Jesus would not have had any haters, he never would have got to his promise. If Jesus would not have had, had haters, he would never got to his glory. It takes haters to motivate you to a place beyond where you are now. Tell somebody, I'm motivated to move beyond my now. Y'all ain't excited enough. Tell your neighbor, I'm motivated to move beyond my now. I don't have time for folks going around. You know, people going to drop salt. Some, I don't know what they say now. Drop salt. They're going to do all kinds of stuff, but it's all good. But he says that now, but 
I don't have a problem with people envying or getting jealous, but I do have a problem when you try to get other people stirred up in your mess. I'm right here in the book. I, I have a problem. I don't have no problem with you hating me. But don't move your brother and sister to dislike me because you got a problem with me. Here they was, they had a problem with Paul, and it wasn't just that they had a problem with Paul, but they want to make everybody else upset, and they got some old renegades. You can have some renegades in the church, come on. You, you can have some people that are in the church that all they're about is the next The next whatever, the next issue that they can jump on the bandwagon. Look what this says. I, I didn't make this up. Tell somebody he didn't make it up. They gather a, a certain lured fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar. They left the church with mess and went out the church into the streets, into the marketplace to stir up even, even more stuff. All because Paul brought the good news about Jesus. And see, the Bible said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let me show you. God is going to free you from your denomination. Oh, I know a lot of people don't like this. The Bible said teach no other doctrine than that of Jesus Christ. We teach a lot of things of what we like and what we want, but we don't want to really concentrate on what God has already spoken. For if we understood that denomination is the vision of the body, when God calls us to be one, yeah. tell somebody one. He prayed that as, he, he prayed himself. He said, Lord, I pray that as you and I are one, I pray that they may be one. Yeah. Tell me also. Oh, so we struggle in being disciples and trying to disciple others that some of us can't even get past things that's just part of life. Stop complaining about people getting, don't like you. It's just a part of life. Stop complaining because everybody won't agree with you or everybody won't cooperate with you or everybody won't work with you. Gee, get over it. It's a part of life. The Bible tells us, see, I just can't take one scripture. I have to teach the whole text. Tell somebody to teach the whole text. Because we love to pluck stuff out of its context and make it mean whatever we want it to mean and re not realizing it loses its power when you take it out of its context. So the Bible, they set all the city in an uproar. And they assaulted the house of Jason. You got to understand because Paul and Silas were with Jason. And, and so they couldn't find them. So they went to who they was hanging with. See, when people can't get to the leader, they'll get with people that hang out with the leader. They, 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 they'll pick on the people that support the leader. Y'all ain't going to say nothing in here. And, and see, 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 you got to understand, oftentimes they would not be able to lay hands on the head, but they'll try to attack the other part of the body. You got to understand, Christ had the church. And, and, and so even though we, Christ, see, people that don't know him can't see him, but they will attack the body. You are the body. Y'all ain't got this. See, the world won't, can't attack Christ, but they will attack you That's a part of the body. Look at somebody say, I am the body. I am a member of the body. And I am under attack. Y'all don't want to say that with conviction. He says that if you live for him, you're going to suffer not because of you, but you're going to suffer because of the head. Is not Christ the head? So they tried to find, couldn't find him, and they, they, they assaulted Jason and, and certain brothers. Until the, they brought him unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned. See, that's the problem now. We ain't turning them upside down anymore. We, we're, we're not radical enough now. Come on. We, we're not. We, 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 everything goes. We're not turning. Come on. Tell, we got to turn the nations. We got to turn the city. We got to turn our house, our communities upside down for the sake of Christ. Christ wants us to move some things. Christ wants us to move some things in our communities in order for the message to be told. These have turned the world upside down and come hither also, saying they had went to other places, and now they're here doing the same thing. See, let me tell you something. When you lead the church, you ought to still be doing the same thing you did in church out there. When you lead the church, you ought to do the same thing in your house that you did at the church. If you're on fire in the church, you certainly ought to be on fire on your job. If you're on fire at prayer meeting, you ought to be on fire in your community meeting. 
if you on fire in praise and worship. But this is 2016, and your point is, God doesn't change. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and say with me forever. So if you love him, tell somebody if I love him. Tell somebody if I love him. And if you're on your, I want everybody to get on your social media and, 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 and check in at True World Life and share this message. Because the, the, the kingdom has to know that if the world is going to change, we have to change. You can't expect them to change. We remain the same as we've always been. So Paul started something. Some that don't know Christ, they, they always start in some confusion. It wasn't confusion. It was just the idea there were some haters in the building, and, and they didn't like what God was doing. God was delivering people. It, 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 Sunday, I told you that there was one that, that, that brought her massive much gain, and, and Paul them cast the demon, the spirit out, and the folk that was gaining got mad. Can I show you something? As long as people can profit off you, they get mad if you change. As long as people can keep their, they can put their finger on you and dictate to you your blessings. See, that's what the problem I got with a lot of things. See, we limit God because we, we, we want the handouts from everybody else. I'm sorry. I know some of you say, no, I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm saying God has more for you. He says, I come that you may have life. You're living, but he wants you to have life more abundantly. God wants more for, for you than you want for yourself. Now, that's a good God. He wants more for you than you're willing to receive. Now, some of you think I got to wait until I die and go to heaven. No, you don't. I don't know about anybody here. I don't want to wait until I die. And go. I want to go to heaven, but I want to enjoy his blessings while I'm alive. I want to enjoy his victory. I want to enjoy his healing. I want to enjoy his abundance in this life. So I'm able to share and disciple and display to some lost person that God is a good God. I want my fruit to be seen in this earth. Whom Jason had received. And these all do contrary to the decree of Caesar saying, that there is another king, one Jesus. Verse 8 says, And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things, and when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. Basically, as they received bond, they let them go. They was cast before people all because of some people in the synagogue that didn't like what was being said. <coughs> it's hard to believe that church folk do you like that. That's the problem. They church folk, they ain't Christians. Church folks allow to do anything. Cuss, cut, shoot, kill, steal. Y'all say amen. amen. But a Christian, no, I got to love you. In spite of. Goes on to say, Nine says, and when they had taken security, we did. No, verse ten it says, and the brother immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night into Berea. When coming thither, went unto the synagogue. He goes again into the say what I mean synagogue. Paul didn't stop because trouble was brewing. He kept on doing his father's will. He going to another synagogue. Now these people he's going to meet now are more noble than the people he just got through talking to. More learned, more this and that, more astute. <clears throat> so it's going to be a different kind of people. Now, in discipleship, you're going to meet all kind of people. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, I could have made an excuse that I've been sick for the last three days and not been here, but God is my healer. Yeah. And, and so tell somebody, I'm doing just fine. Yeah. I ain't missed a beat yet. I learned one thing about sickness. If I lay down, it'll get me, but if I keep pressing, I'll overcome it. <laughs> And let me show you something else. I'm not looking for an excuse not to go to work. 
Y'all ain't got this. I'm not looking for an excuse. See, the Bible said thou art in excuse. I don't need any excuse. Let me show you something. There are some of you, excuse me if I go off the path, that say I don't have a job. If you get Jesus, make a job. See, when you understand the goodness of God, you don't walk around saying what I don't have. I realize I can call it into existence. If I need a job, I say, God, send me jobs with an S. See, God don't don't only want to bless you, but he want to bless everybody. That's the problem with us. We walk around and say what we don't have. If we don't have it, make it. You don't believe it? God stepped out and said there was nothing. He said, let that be. And there? Y'all don't have it yet. Tell somebody if it don't, if it, if it ain't there, make it. How can I make it? By your faith. Without faith, it is impossible. But watch this. Let me go a little deeper. How can God trust you with your own and you haven't taken care of what somebody else has had? Stop lying to yourself. You talking about you're gonna be a great business owner, and while you was working for somebody else, you didn't do the right thing. The Bible said, "No, no, 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 it won't work." Can I just stay in the word? Yes, I believe I will. I have no other choice. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Now, it wasn't an issue where he had to persuade them, but they was ready to receive. And he searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. That means there was a lot. Tell somebody there was a lot. But the Jews that was there, that had knowledge of the word of God, was preached of Paul at Berea. They came thither also and stirred up. Here come the folk don't left where they already stirred up. Here the great move of God over there. They come getting their belongings, coming and trying to stop the move. Tell somebody you can't stop God's move. No, you're not saying it loud enough because somebody need to be know, don't know this right now. You cannot stop God's move. Now, can, have you ever asked yourself why people stir up stuff? Because they lack understanding. Y'all ain't got it. You want to know why people act the way they do? Because they have lack of understanding. Because if any of them would have known who Jesus was and what was going to happen, he would have never been crucified. So can I put it like God do? Sometimes God will harden your heart. Sometimes God will block you from the revelation of him simply because of your stubbornness. If you don't believe, ask Pharaoh. Can I go all the way back? Ask Pharaoh. Pharaoh had all the opportunity in the world to believe that God said, Moses, come on, let me get my mic. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up now, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. God, y'all just bear with me. Hurry up, hurry up, you got to move it fast now. Let's go. Listen. Y'all think I'm crazy. Hurry up, 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 hurry Now you want to know why I'm taking the bear. Hey, take your name as reason for everything. I'm back, y'all. Tell someone I'm back. Because God would never call you in nothing he prepared. I could have got the mic and talked off that mic and they wouldn't hurt me. Amen. Listen. God uses Paul to reach people that has never been reached. And there were people that were of his own did not like the message. Because if you read scriptures after he got up, they tried to pay some of them to tell a lie that the disciples came and stole the body. Because they want to taint the message of the resurrection. Amen. How many of y'all read that part? Somebody, if you ain't got that far, just say, I ain't got that far yet. Listen. And then immediately the, the, the brethren sent away Paul to go as 
word to the sea. But Silas and Timothy, they stayed behind. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens. And receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy, for to come to him with all speed, they departed. So Paul sends back for them and tell them to hurry up. Because if you understand, they were armor bearers or they were help. They were ministers themselves. But Paul needed them as he continued in this spreading the gospel. All right, tell somebody you can't do it by yourself. I know you say you're anointed, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, but you can't do it by yourself. Tell somebody I need some help. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred. A spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Can I just show y'all something? Let me ask you a question. If Paul was alive today, do you think that same spirit would be stirred? Why do you think it'll be stirred? No, I'm not, I'm just been, why do you think his spirit will be stirred? What is idolatry? First of all, I guess I need to explain that. What is idolatry? Because some of you are looking at me, why? He was way back then. Why would he be stirred? When you're worshiping your children, your spouses, your cars, your job, your clothes, I, I, can I, do I need to go on? Anything other that you put ahead of God is an idol. Thou shalt have no other God before him. Anything, y'all listen up, all you believers. Anything you put before God is an idol. So, how would Paul feel today? Therefore, the spirit he in the synagogue, he's in the synagogue again with the Jews and with the devout persons. And in the market daily with them that met with him. Now, he was meeting with people and certain philosophers and, and all of these people that he encountered, all these, these title people, all these people that know. And some said, what will this babbler say? Now, they call him a babbler. Why would they call him a babbler? Because he's saying stuff they ain't used to. He's talking stuff they don't understand. Can I share something with you? A person that is in poverty, poverty, that's talking to a rich person, and a rich person is trying to tell them how to better himself, but if the, if the person that is poor don't want to hear it, that's, then, then the rich person is babbling. If the rich person is speaking language or terminology that he don't understand, then he's babbling. But he's trying to help his brother, he's trying to help his sister, say with me, come out. But sometimes you can be in a place so long that it becomes embedded in you. You can be down so long that down can get embedded in you. You can be back so far and been back so long that it can become so embedded in you that when somebody comes along to tell you you can come out, you stand back there, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking crazy. I don't think, I, I don't think I, I've been here for 40. No, I've been here for 38 years. That sounds like the man at the pool of Bethesda. Every time I try, somebody always get ahead of me. Jesus sounds like a babbler, but Jesus said, do you believe that you can be made whole? All it takes is a belief. Tell somebody, all it takes for me to do is believe. If you can believe today that all things are possible, God can turn your situation around. Say, turn my situation around, God. Now I'm excited because some of you won't agree to the truth, but God will send people that will. So, so, listen, and some said, this babbler, and some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Now, you can't just preach Jesus without preaching the resurrection because in order to have salvation, you got to believe in the resurrection. You just can't believe that he walked the earth. He did all this. Yeah, I believe he, he fed folks. I believe he raised the dead. But I have a problem believing that he got up out of the grave. Well, you don't have salvation. And then if you don't have salvation, tell somebody, I might just not be. No, you're not saved. Ain't no mind you're not saved. 
The Bible says in Romans that you got to confess with your mouth that he came down from above, that he descended, and he got and God raised, he died, and God raised him again. That's how you are saved. But he preached Jesus and the resurrection, and they took him and brought him. And they did all of this stuff, and they said, what is this new doctrine? New. New. You can't put new wine in old wineskins. Simply put, you got to change your way of thinking to receive the new things God want to reveal unto you. You got to change your old. The Paul says, behold, the old man, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have now become what? New. So your old way of thinking has to dissolve, has to go away in order for you to understand what God is speaking now. But listen, I'm getting to the good part. Oh, 708. Verse 22, everybody get there. There's a place called Mars Hills, and, and Paul stood in the midst, and he said, uh, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Tell somebody, don't be superstitious. My hand itching. That means I'm going to get some money. <laughs> if you didn't go to work. I don't think so, cuz. I'm driving down a dark road, and I'm about two miles away from my destination, and, and to go around the other way, it's going to take me 12 miles, and a black cat crossed my path. You stop, turn around, and go back the other way. You just too, y'all ain't going to say that superstitious. And if he... Definitely right out in front of my car. I'm not going to try to hit him, but if he, I'm not going to take the curve. I'm just going to bite the bullet. Come on. He said, it's going to just be one of his lives. He's supposed to have nine. I hope this ain't his ninth one. I hope he on five or seven or eight. I hope this ain't his ninth one. Because if it's ninth one, he's going to be dead. But tell somebody, I'm, I'm going to be. Some of you will leave the road. Kill yourself and your family missing a cat. It'll be run over. He says, you are too superstitious. Like most of us in, in church, we, 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 we so religious that we can't even operate off truth. We're so embedded in, in all of these, these, these things we think worship is that we can't live off truth. The Bible said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? And whom the Son set free is certainly... Free, say I'm free indeed. He says, now, as I stood and as I passed by and beheld your devotions, now, it makes mention of devotions. Tell your neighbor devotions. And, 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 and this, this devotions is your object of worship. When you're doing a devotion, you have an object in mind. So if your devotion in church, if, if you're doing devotion in the old church, I came out of the Baptist church, there used to be devotion. Our object of our devotion or our object of our praise should be who? God. So me, God. So, he says, as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar within this inscription. Now, I know a lot of you say we shouldn't worship, have, uh, celebrate pagan days, and I agree with you. Now, let me show you something. I'm going to bust your bubble. Now, you won't celebrate Halloween, church folk, but you celebrate Valentine's Day. Uh, hello. You said because of the spooks and evil of Halloween pagan, we shouldn't celebrate, and I agree. But what about Sweetheart Day? I don't see no lady talking about something. That's a pagan day. Don't you bring me nothing. Y'all y'all quiet because it has to do with a, a God of love. Agree? Oh, y'all ain't going to say That's a whole other subject. Idols. See, we have not been learned enough. We, we, we own and we off. 
We're not consistent. But watch what God, watch what Paul does. Paul knew that these were things that shouldn't be, but in order to reach them, he didn't just beat them down. He found something there that he can use to teach them about God. He, he saw all these gods, but he got the one that they was too ignorant to even recognize, and the one they didn't recognize, the one they should have been. For you being ignorant of God's righteousness going about to establish your own righteousness. He says, I, I understand you got some things going on. He says, but there's one inscription that's here that I want to focus on. Tell your neighbor, find something you can focus on to lead people to Christ. If people have been in the world all their life, all they know is Halloween. What can you do to take it and lead them to Christ? Instead of going up to an unsaved person, that's a pagan. You, you, that's of the devil. They don't care. They don't see it like that. You've been schooled. You ought to be schooled enough to understand. There ought to be something you can find. Let me show you something. You know the kids going out there, there are a lot of evil people doing all kinds of things, the candy and stuff. Why don't you create an opportunity for the kingdom where they can just come here and be blessed, learn about God, and still receive something great. That's what Paul did. We said that, that, that people are, 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 are dying because of these things, but we're not looking what we can find out of that to show people Jesus. Amen. Description to the unknown God, capital said capital. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, how him declare I unto you. He says what you don't know, the unknown, I'm going to declare. Now, tell your neighbor, I'm almost finished. Now, what is he declaring? What is he going to declare to them? He was not going to bring, he's not bringing a new deity, but making known the one they already acknowledge. See, they had a problem receiving something new, so he took what they already had and showed them something that you already got it here, but listen, let me enlighten you on it. Y'all ain't got this. Can, can I help all you dignified philosophers, all of you that want to just, just beat everything down, but you're not producing fruit out of it? Yes, I agree with you, but at what point do we understand that we got to love people enough to draw them out? For if, Come on, anybody know God drew you out of something? Come on, anybody can lift their hands and hear say, God drew me out of something? Anybody thankful that God drew you out of something that you couldn't get yourself? I dare you to stand to your feet and say, God drew me out. And he's still drawing today. So Paul draws them out, not out of what they didn't know, but he used what they did know. He says, to your unknown God, him I declare. And he declares eight doctrines of God. Number one, he, he, in Acts 17, 24, he says, he's the creator of all things. Number two, he says, he's Lord of heaven and earth. He dwells not in man-made temples. Number four, is not worshipped by man's hands. Number five, universal providence. Number six, made all people of, let me, ooh, one cat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. To all you racists. The Bible says, now, you, your, your, your hide is Christianity. But you have to understand all mankind came from Adam. Yeah. Come on, Adam, y'all ain't going to say nothing. And Eve, tell your neighbor one kind. I'm talking about the doctrines of, of, of God. He planted, he planned habitations. Number eight, he planned the ages. Say with me the ages. 18, excuse me. Come on, come on, the ages. Say ages. He, God provided salvation. He um, omnipresent. God, the source of all life. He is a living being. Revelation of God, repentance, commandment, great judgment day upon it, the whole world to be judged in righteousness, Jesus Christ to judge. Resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees justice to all. Y'all can sit down. Now, I can give you a background scripture, but you got to go to the website for that. Go to my Facebook page, and I put every scripture out of every doctrine I gave you, where you can find it in the scripture. 
because of time restraints, as we say. We have a lot of growing up to do in the church. We have come to the point where everybody, we want to be seen instead of God being seen. We're moved by titles. Can, can I, 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 don't, I don't deny it. I don't reject it. And people say, well, God is giving this, he's that. That's an office. It ain't got nothing to do with the title. As long as I, 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 I occupy the office and live up to the criteria of the office, God is okay with me if I decide not to carry the title. But what if you do carry a title and you don't operate in the office? What does it make you to be called all of these things that we, we call and you're not living and operating in the office? Paul was great. Paul exercised a lot of these things. Paul started a whole lot of church churches. But all we call him was Paul. Especially in Afro-American, Af Afro-American church, we love titles. And get upset if you don't call me pastor, doctor. Yeah. We had a fight. You disrespecting all. There's not no disrespect. Your mama called you Anthony. I'm going to call you Anthony. Amen. What did Paul do? Paul realized that as I carry the message of Christ, I'm happy because I know there are going to be some that will believe. But I'm not shocked if people tell me don't believe. You can't make nobody believe in Christ. All you can do is just tell the story. And I think Paul did a great job on telling the story. How many of you think Paul did a great job telling the story? So, so many times in our life today, And as I begin to survey always, every day, I'm always, God always had me focusing and looking at things. And our people <coughs> are swayed from the church. And I find it's not the people's fault. It's that we don't want to tell the story. We say we love God in the room. But we're ashamed to witness out there. He said, if you'd be ashamed to own me before men, I'd be, I'd be ashamed to own you before my Father, which is in heaven. And so I found that the problem is not the people, it's us who profess to be who we are. And it's good in here, but it's sour out there. And because it's not popular, we don't want to say anything. What all you got to do is love people. Demonstrate the goodness of God. Show them how fruitful God can bless, be, be a blessing to them if they believe. The church has never lost its power. The Bible already says that the gates of hell shall not prevail. If you don't understand the word, they, the hell will not win. Paul had so many encounters in his witnessing. He was shipwrecked a couple of times. And, 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 and one time he fell on an island of, of a whole lot of barbarians. And, and he was shipwrecked. And Paul had liberty, even though he was held captive, he still had liberty. Isn't it amazing to know that you can be in a situation and God still give you freedom? The Bible said there was gathering sticks to do a fire, and Paul was always ministering and teaching. And the Bible said he went to gather sticks and a viper lashed onto his hand and, and watches all these crazy non-believing folk. Now, let me show you something. God will show up, put you in a place to make you out of a miracle. Yes, he will. Now, they saw, they, have saw, they saw men over and over again die. From the bite of a viper. But here comes a man of God that is on a mission set, have a purpose to go over to the high calling. He had to go over to Caesars. And they stood back and they saw him as he was a dead man. 
which means they was standing to watch him die. There are a lot of people that don't believe in God waiting on you to die. But let me tell you, tell your neighbor, you keep on watching, they ain't going to die. They see you go through tough situations, and they say, they about to go down. But I tell you, be like Paul. Grab your hand and tell your neighbor, there's some things you got to shake or loose from yourself. You got to shake some stuff off. People looking at you to die, and you just still shaking it off. Now Paul was able to walk in and let me preach to you now. Cause your eye like this. You mean he didn't die? I saw Bill die. I saw Bobby die. But this crazy man still walking around. Sound like Joe. His friend thought it was over. Samson fell in love one day. God told him, don't tell your source of your strength. And Samson told Delilah, and Delilah backstabbed him and, and, and told everybody his source is in his hair. Yeah. Cut his hair, and, but let me show you something. And, and they thought they had him, but how many know God would give you a little more power? To take your enemies out. And I, I, they said they had Samson bound. And he said, Lord, I've sinned. He said, but Lord, if you will, give me just one more time a little strength. See, God has a way of rewarding you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Even though he died, but he took out all of his adversaries. He took out the enemy. God will allow you to take out the enemy. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you don't, somebody will. When you don't praise him, somebody will. Praise ain't sin still. And you never read in the Bible or the word of God, we talk about praise. We have, that's a whole other subject. Praise ain't never been quiet. Praise, the church don't understand. Praise has never been quiet. When Gideon told him on the seventh time, we're going to send up a praise. Pray, they was quiet. They wouldn't praise it. But when they praised, the walls came down. Walls won't come down in your life until you learn to praise. The Bible said the angels rejoice when one come in the saving knowledge. He said the angels, you may not jump, but the Bible said when one come here and you sit and look and don't pray, the Bible said the angels in heaven are making a noise. Read your word. Praise confuses the enemy. Because in your bad situation, the enemy don't want you to praise him. But in your situation, you praise him. He get miscombobulated. He had to forget what he was afflicting you with. Because what, sis, what, what? He had to take his hands off you because he can't afflict you no more because you acting like a nut praising him. So, 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 now you got your victory. You got your breakthrough. I rushed in here tonight. To give a word. Got my word about five something. Open my Bible. I put it out on the Facebook and let y'all read it. Told you what I'm going to teach you. Because we need to start turning some stuff upside down. I know I got haters. And I thank God for you. Jesus had Judas. And he thanked. He said, let me show you something. God will give you enough discernment to know. That everybody around you ain't for you. He says, I have called 12 of you and behold, one of you is a devil. But you never see Jesus point him out. You never see Jesus point him out. He was long suffering. He put up with him. He tolerated him. And can I show you how the devil showed himself? Judas had already showed himself a long time ago. By the oil. Why is she doing that? We could have tucked that and gave to the poor. Well, you ain't that concerned about no poor. She was anointing his body for burial. You concerned about yourself. He already had told on himself. Even when Jesus pointed him out at the table, the last supper, talked about y'all in communion Sunday. He says, one of y'all going to betray me. Now, let, let me tell you something. I ain't thinking about Judas. But I'm looking at the other level. All of them in that talk, is it me? Come on now. <laughs> is it me? 
You don't know if you're betraying God. You got to question yourself. Read the text. They say, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Jesus said, he that did it with me. He said, hey, come here, let me tell you something. Hurry up and do what you got to do. Because I'm about ready to get to my breakthrough. There have been times in my life people thought they'd kill me, but I rise. <laughs> about two weeks ago, God has blessed me in a whole lot of areas of my life. And God has a way of knowing you. He says, you can go ahead and do it again. And I'm about to do something I love again. And you thought I made an impact before, but God says the impact is going to be greater. And the way he does it is, let me show you something. There are a lot of people doing what I like to do, but ain't nobody receiving fruit. But a week, two weeks, don't too many witnesses. One week, the next week, some came. Y'all ain't going to say that. Then I started looking. I said, oh, my goodness. God says it's time. He says, I'm going to let you do what you like to do. And, and, and says, they were mad the first time. They're going to fall out the tree this time. I went to a meeting. And somebody had the audacity to ask me. Because they thought that somebody wasn't worthy. I don't, I ain't trying to be funny, but there are a whole lot of people better than that. But you missed it. The anointing wasn't on you yeah, for that. Exactly. I don't care how much talent you got. If you ain't been anointed to do it, you can't do it. God always took the least to show the greater of God's ability. And let me show you, there are some of you that are walking around thinking that you're not nothing. But I tell you, get Jesus and God will lay his hands on you and you will set all stuff. All the things people can ever say about you, you can set it aside. I'm a witness that God is able to do anything. God would, oh my goodness. You don't know who I'm connected with. See, I be quiet and, and you let me show you something. God has a way of connecting you and he said, keep your mouth closed. Y'all missing it. God has a way of connecting, not the Bible said he'll bring you in a company of great men. You don't know who I know. I just don't tell you. God said he would bring you in a company of great men. See, what God needs for us to do is to be obedient so his glory can be revealed through us where other people can be saved. That's what Paul did. The Bible said when Paul walked, people cast sick folks in his shadow. If you don't want that kind of power, that's you. I want everything God has for me. The Bible said they believed enough. It wasn't that Paul was healing, but they had enough faith in the Christ that he preached that they believed that if I can just get them in the presence of the man of God and he just shout out, they'll be healed again. Read your word. And you know what the Bible said? They were healed. What's stopping you from your greater? I'm not limited by the number of people I see because God blessed me to reach way more. Faith is not what you see before you. Faith is what you see beyond what you see with your eyes. See farther than where you are and find yourself walking in the promise. I thank God every day. And, and, and so what's so true about what I taught y'all tonight? Your resistance going to come from within. From the priest brethren. Yes. Sisters. Because all of us are jealous. Are envious. It's amazing that preachers are envious of one another. I deal with it every day. I don't care how much I like and support what people are doing. But because people just can't be happy for you. But let me show what God shows me. He says, I can bless you because you can be happy for somebody else. It ain't got nothing to do with them being happy for you. And so, that's how I operate. Let me say, good job. Let me support them. Whether or not they support me because I receive what I sow. Not for what nobody do to me. 
Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth. If you sow discourse, you're going to reap discourse. Let's follow Paul's example. Let's not stop on our journey. You can't love God and not share the message of Jesus. That is our great commission that we find in the word. Jesus said, I came to seek and save. Then he tells us to go so they can get saved. Make disciples. Teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever he has commanded us. And he said, he promised us, he promised us that lo, he would be with us always, even. Say with me to the ends of the world. I love him. He's a forgiving God. You know, all of us have messed up. And see, that's what we, we mess up at. We don't tell people we mess up. And that's why people think that this thing is hard. This thing is not hard. All God wants you to do is believe. None of us are perfect. But thank, we can all thank God we all forgiven. Can we be thankful that we are forgiven? It was Christ who <laughs> forgave us. Lord, I just honor you tonight for your glory. And I honor you for everything that you have done. Now, God, in your name, we bless you. We give honor to the Most High God for revelation and knowledge of your word. And that it not only is history, but it lives today in us. For the word will never die because you are the word. The word dwelled and walked among 